From Decrypt Media, this is the Decrypt Daily, and my name is Matthew Diemer. Today on the show, Swan Bitcoin 101 and EIP 1559's NFT. What is it? Well, we're going to tell you a 101 on both from today on the Decrypt Daily. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. And if you're listening to this, you probably know that I released the podcast late today. I am sorry. I didn't know when I was dropping off my car to get repairs that I was going to have to sit there and wait for those repairs to get done. So I was stuck there until noon. And that's why I'm recording this at 12.07 Eastern Standard Time. Let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. And Bitcoin. It's sitting at $32,485.54. Up 1.6% in 24. Ethereum's at $2,036, up 4% in 24. Tether's in the number three spot. Binance Coins at $296, up 1.8%. And Cardano's at $1.19, up 1%. Running off the top 10, we have XRP, USDC, Dogecoin, Polkadot, and BUSD. Total market cap, we're at $1.3 trillion, and a BTC dominance of 45.8%. Moving into our first conversation, I talked to Corey Clipston, the founder and CEO of Swan Bitcoin. And we're going to do Swan Bitcoin 101. Corey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Great, Matt. Thanks for having me. 100%. Look, you know, I've been in the space for a while. And then, you know, all of a sudden, sometimes, you know, different names start popping up. And Swan has been popping up on my radar quite a bit. And I honestly, I have to be honest with you, I haven't used it, don't know much about it. And that's why we're here to give a 101 on Swan Bitcoin. Let me know what's going on. What is Swan, sir? Yeah, so we launched... Uh... About 15 months ago, so kind of Q2 of 2020. And uh, the thesis was that a Bitcoin only on ramp where you can come and learn about just Bitcoin, upgrade your money and uh, buy Bitcoin really simple, fast, easy, really good guidance, incredible service and, and a focus on on great education and community uh, would be really high, highly valued by the community and highly recommended and uh, lots of people would use it. And uh, it turns out that we were right. Awesome. So is this a computer app, uh, a phone app? Is it both? Uh, walk me through the whole process. I'm, I'm, t- I'm telling yeah. you, I'm starting from, ba- from no worries. foundation. Yeah. So, you know, just go to swanbitcoin.com. Uh, it is a it is optimized for mobile. So it's a mobile web app. We actually have native web apps coming out in the next month or so. Not web apps, native apps on iOS and Android, uh, probably in August. But, you know, people just use the the mobile site super fast, super snappy, really, uh, really easy to use and get in and out, make purchases. But really, the um, the the first product that we launched with is, remains, you know, probably our most popular, which is setting up automatic recurring purchases. So you can just, you know, set it and forget it, automatically convert some of your fiat inflow, get paid in Bitcoin, uh, just have that automatic conversion happening and, uh, and make purchases every day, every week or every month, according to your plan. Reoccurring Bitcoin payments. Okay, so that's that's really cool. So basically, uh, you're going to take out, say, uh, $50 a, a week or a month out of your paycheck or whatever's going into your bank account and then just putting into Bitcoin hodlings? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, in, in the United States, which is where we, we run this product in particular is, uh, you know, free ACH pull from your bank account happens automatically and then it automatically converts to Bitcoin on on Swan. And then you can also set it up to automatically withdraw to your cold storage if you want to, or if you are not comfortable with that, then you can uh, just leave it with us. And we use uh, Prime Trust as a legal custodian and Fireblocks as the physical custodian. So kind of like best in class stack for custody um, if you want to just leave it on the platform. Understood. You know, there's a part in your website right now that says build your stack. It said over the last three years, saving $50 per week in Bitcoin turned $7,800 into almost $60,000. That's a hell of a number. Um, I know this isn't financial advice, but do you expect that Bitcoin and people putting money into Bitcoin over the next, say, from this time to the next three years will have uh, returns like that? I mean, it's the best money that we've ever known. It's the best store of value that we've ever had as a, as a race of humans on this planet. Um, you know, I think Bitcoin as a long-term savings technology cannot be equaled. Um, nothing's going to touch it. And so, you know, I, I don't know if it matters whether you're thinking about two years, three years, five years, whatever. I think that it's a good idea as long as you can exchange fiat for Bitcoin to be exchanging some of your fiat for Bitcoin. <laughs> 
Under, understood. Now, there are other pl places to buy Bitcoin. And I, I guess I'm trying to find the differentiator between Swan and these other places. You know, there's Coinbase, Binance.us, FTX, US, you know, so on and so forth, Gemini, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But now we have Swan. What is the differentiation between Swan and these other places? Well, the crypto exchanges have the incentive to fool you into trading altcoins and do something that's actually counter to the interest of 99% of people that would come on that platform, right? Their business model is to encourage you to churn that value and trade in and out of positions, you know, 50 times a year or whatever. Um, we don't even have a sell button. You're just buying Bitcoin and that's it. Yes, you can call us or email us if you want to sell uh, but, you know, 99.9% .9 of transactions are, are purchases, which is what it should be. You shouldn't be getting overextended. You shouldn't be getting over leveraged. You should only buy, it, you know, the amount of Bitcoin that you can afford to hold. You should not buy something that you're going to have to sell in the future. This is not an investment. This is, you know, Bitcoin is a savings technology. But with that, you can withdraw your Bitcoin to, say, your ledger wallet and, and whatnot, right? Absolutely. That's what I was talking about with the, uh, the free automatic withdrawals. You can send that to any Bitcoin address that you want. Oh, can you talk about your fee structure? I mean, so I, I know for, for one way is like, you know, if you go up to Coinbase or these other ones, and again, whoever's listening, this is not a promotion of Swan. I'm just trying to figure out why people would use Swan. I want him to, uh, the CEO and founder to explain that to us. But, uh, you know, in Coinbase, fees are kind of, kind of hefty, you know, uh, what, what does your fee structure look like? And, and how would these buys come in and what it would look like to your bottom line? Yeah. I mean, the, the Coinbase app, like the retail app where most people start uh, does have egregious fees and they sort of misrepresent with the price that they show. And then they tack on a spread on top of that. And then they're, you know, kind of nickel and diming you wherever um, we're flat 0.99%. There's no spread on top of that. There's no other fee of any kind, no custody fee, no withdrawal fee, no nothing. Um, so Basically, we're generally 60 to 80% uh, less expensive than the Coinbase app. Uh, now, to be fair, Coinbase Pro, you know, if you're comfortable with kind of the GDAX exchange and setting limit orders and things like that, then obviously you can get uh, cheaper prices. You're you know, basically just paying uh, the spread between, between um, bid and ask if you, if you set a market order or something like that, right? It's not that big a deal. But uh, you know, most people are not going to buy that way. And then when you get to, you know, advancing beyond just kind of the retail purchases, the quick one-time purchases of, you know, a thousand bucks or, or these, you know, recurring purchase plans of a few hundred bucks a week or whatever. And then you get into the, the service that we launched this year in 2021, which is uh, Swan Private Client Services. Now we're actually to go, we've gone international. We sell in a hundred countries and it's basically the world's high net worth individuals, family offices, and small and medium sized businesses purchasing Bitcoin through Swan via wire transfer. And what they're really looking for is kind of high touch service. They really want Bitcoin explained to them. They want the smartest people in the world that know every, how to handle every objection about Bitcoin and, you know, understand everything about wallets and multi-sig and all of these different things and can kind of be like your Bitcoin guy or gal and, uh, and hold your hand on your Bitcoin journey and provide all of the educational resources and, you know, help your friends and then get your cousin involved and get your aunt involved and kind of, you know, just build out the, the Bitcoin social network of purchases around the world. So that, that business has taken off like crazy. We actually staffed it finally in May. And uh, I guess we're sitting here like mid July, it's already over half of company sales, which is pretty wild. Awesome. Awesome. Bitcoin only. I mean, it might be you know obvious to some why you're Bitcoin only, but why are you Bitcoin only? I mean, I think uh, it's the only crypto asset that is uh, doing what it's intended to do. Everything else is basically a speculation on a speculation and uh, and is unproven. You know, I think uh, it makes sense to sell something that uh, that stands on firm footing that you can get behind completely. Also makes a big difference that, uh, you know, it, it actually verifiably for sure is not a security. And that's kind of the regulatory regime that it's under. Like you could never as a crypto exchange have kind of like a high touch sales team that was, I mean, it'd be impossible to eloquently represent 50 altcoins and Bitcoin who could do that. And then your legal and compliance team would never actually let you do it because the SEC at any point could, you know, deem these unregistered securities to be unregistered securities. <laughs> and then you'd be exposed to lawsuits, et cetera. So, you know, Bitcoin only has a lot of advantages, um, you know, and then on the, on the economics of it, which is great, you know, people that are raising their hand and saying, I want to buy from a company that's Bitcoin only, you're not going to be going into a part of their portfolio. That's like the 1% they have for punting crypto. These are generally people that are, that are pretty orange pilled and you're actually talking about their entire net worth and what percentage of their entire net worth is going into Bitcoin. So, you know, looking at like publicly, 
available information comparing us to like Voyager or something. So Voyager, you know, public company has, you know, trades 50 cryptos in their app or whatever. Their fees are higher than us, promote trading like crazy, you know, really irresponsible marketing, et cetera. And, you know, they're churning people's accounts, just trying to get them to trade all the time. But our average revenue per user per month is higher than theirs, even though it's one way only, no trading and only one asset. Got it. You know, th- those are a lot of really good points, you know, and I think that we saw that a couple of times, with, especially with um, Ripple the, uh, a couple of months ago when, you know, it was on Coinbase and, you know, different exchanges started to delist them and it was a security. Nobody knew what was going on. Everybody was hodler. There was like a, a, a huge like void of information of what's going to happen to this thing this asset that I'm holding now. And because what you just said, the SEC comes up and says, we're going to look at that. And we're going to look at everybody that's trading that and, and helping you buy that. And so that's a, that's a very good point. Um, you did mention Voyager though. And I, and I don't see this on your website. So I have to ask uh, Voyager also gives you returns on your hodling for, for storing your crypto into their wallet. Do you offer something like that? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm philosophically opposed to, these interest bearing accounts for rehypothecating a bearer asset that really the goal should be to have people take self custody. I mean, that's kind of the point is to have state free money that doesn't depend on a, th- on a trusted third party. Um, for people that do want to, I mean, you can withdraw to any Bitcoin address. If you want to take your Bitcoin that you buy with Swan, put it somewhere and, you know, risk it for 2% or 3% or whatever, when probably the market rate that would be fair for the risk that you're taking, handing it over to somebody that's lending it out to shorts and market makers that might blow up, you know, a fair rate for that's probably 15 to 25%, not 2% or 6%, um, you know, but it's a free world. People can do whatever they want with something that they own. Uh, I just don't recommend it to people that I love. Understood. And, and apparently you love your customers. That's why you're not recommending it. Corey Eclipson, thank you very much for coming on the show. Founder and CEO of Swan Bitcoin. And um, let's uh, follow up in a couple months to see how everything's going. And let's just start expanding this conversation to why only Bitcoin. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, Matt. In our next conversation today, I welcome back Tim Bako, the facilitator for the protocol calls on Ethereum. And he's going to tell us about the NFT created to support or help support EIP-1559 developers. Enjoy. Tim, how are you doing? Welcome back to the show one week later. Yeah, thanks for having me on. 100%. Look, you reached out to me because you had some very interesting news. You guys made an NFT to support the creators, is it, of the EIP-1559 This that's coming out with the London Fork of Ethereum. Is, am I correct with that? And can you explain what the NFT is? Yeah, uh, that's basically correct. So at a high level, um, the people who work on like the Ethereum protocol, um, obviously they get paid and everything, but they you know provide a lot of value to Ethereum and there's no mechanism in the protocol for them to like capture upside from, from that work. Um, so one experiment we, we wanted to run is what if we could get kind of the community to kind of say thanks and you know, provide funding for the people who've helped develop uh, some major upgrades on Ethereum. So the idea behind this NFT is um, basically it's it's gone on sale. There's 1559 copies of it, and there's also one premium version that's on for auction. And then all of the funds that are that are received from the minting of the NFTs are sent to a smart contract. Which splits, which splits them uh, across all of the client team, researchers, and various people who helped uh, get 1559 to mainnet. Gotcha. So what, what is the NFT? And, and, and I think I'm looking at it. It looks like a, a GIF of some sort of like the Ethereum like logo in the middle with hands like grabbing it or something. Yeah. So we worked with an artist, um, Kitet. I hope I'm pronouncing uh, their name right. Um, but they've, they've done a lot of works just like supporting kind of public goods projects in Ethereum. They've done some where the proceeds went to Ether scans, for example, in the past. Um, so this one around 1559, um, you see that you kind of have these two hands that are trying to shape kind of the Ethereum uh, logo in the middle. And if you, if you look closely um, in the logo itself, you see it kind of modifies and shows 1559 halfway throughout. Um, So it's just kind of a way to show, you know, both the developers on one side and the community getting together to add this upgrade to Ethereum. Um, And then there's the kind of premium version of the NFT, the one that's on auction. Uh, That one has a bit more details. Um, It has a frame around it, uh, which has some of kind of the code uh, of EIP-1559 itself, um, some information about like the commit numbers and whatnot. Uh, so just kind of a, an extra level of detail there. Yeah, I'm looking at it. This is actually a pretty, pretty cool looking uh, NFT. How many bids have you got for the uh, NFTs? Now, both of them are for sale, right? There's the the premium edition and the other other edition, yeah. correct? 
Yeah, so basically the the we call that the supporter edition, which is kind of the lower priced one. Um, those are all on sale for uh, 0.1559 ETH. Um, there's only 1559 of them, and we launched yesterday and have sold uh, 917 of them as of right now. Wow. Um, yeah, and then the other one uh, is an auction. So the the first bid which we got yesterday was 15.59 ETH. And then that launched the auction uh, to go live for 155.9 hours. Um, and, and that means there's basically still five days uh, on this auction to go. And I see that somebody already bid, bid the 1559 F yeah. for that. You say ETH, I say F, or tomato, tomato, <laughs> let's do, we'll be okay with that. And yeah. so somebody already placed a bid on there. How high do you think this, this can auction off at? I don't know. Um, I'm already happy. Like, you know, we launched this project. It was kind of the first time we did something like that, where like the funds kind of go to, uh, you know, to back to the developers. So we weren't even sure, you know, would people kind of buy this at all or, or whatnot. So yeah, we've just been pretty happy with the response to see that so many people have, have participated. Um, and also we've gotten a, a lot of messages from people saying this is like the first NFT they've bought because, you know, they've been following Ethereum for sometimes years and this is kind of a way that they can give back or just, you know, shorter support for, for, for upgrades they've been waiting for a long time. I, I don't want to speculate what it will bid for or if we'll sell out all the additions, but like, yeah, just seeing the support we've had in like less than a day since launching has been, has been really, really cool. Well, out of 1559 of the supporter um, NFTs, uh, 918, you said 17, one just sold just while we're sitting here. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so they, these are going pretty pretty quick. Ari raised 142 F. Again, what are you guys going to do with all this F that's raised? And how, how so is it going to be distributed and, and who's going to get it and how you're going to figure out about that? Yeah, good point. So if you scroll to the bottom of the post, uh, the list of, of the different addresses that get it is, is, is there. So you can see the whole list. Um, Basically, uh, the the top three are for the different some of the different client teams that worked on this. So this goes straight to like their wallets, and it helps kind of fund their teams. Um, then there's a bunch of individuals. Uh, full disclosure, myself included. I was gonna say, um, I see you there. You get six percent. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody wanted to have their address be publicly tied to their name. Um, so at the top of the post, we have like some rough percentages of like, you know, how much goes to the clients, how much goes to the researchers and whatnot. Yeah. So basically the, the bulk of it goes to different individuals or researchers or people who helped with the testing and whatnot. Um, and that just goes straight to them. So, you know, they're free to spend it on whatever they want. Yeah. And I think off the top of my head, it was something like 48, 49% of the client teams, 16% to the researchers, uh, 15% the different authors on the EAP, so the people who actually put the proposal together, um, then some folks like me who worked on coordination, and then uh, some folks on testing, and uh, last 2% was for the artist who uh, actually did the NFTs for this. And what about Vitalik? How much is he getting? Oh, yeah, good point. So Vitalik and the Go Ethereum team have uh, graciously opted out. Not so basically Vitalik said, I'm rich enough, I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically he, yeah, everybody else was, uh, was fine. Uh, I, I asked him to be fair, you know, they want to see, but yes, uh, he, he opted out. Awesome. Awesome. Tim Bako, facilitator for the protocol calls on Ethereum. Thanks for coming on the show and talking about this. I think this is really cool. Uh, and, and, and after this is all sold, the auction is sold. Let's uh, do a follow up and, and tell me how it, everything went, uh, how much you raised, who got what, and how people are maybe using their NFTs or if they're reselling them and just, just like kind of go through the whole process again. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Decrypt Daily. My name is Matthew Deemer. Don't forget to support DeemerForCongress.com, blockchain advocates in Washington, D.C. It's needed. That's D-I-E-M-E-R for Congress.com. Thank you very much. And until tomorrow, happy hodling, everyone.